Hello. Welcome to the video. Uh, today's lesson, we're going to be looking at section 8.2. We're going to be graphing f of x equals ax squared plus c. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to uh, figure out how the value of c affects the graph of uh, this function f of x equals ax squared plus c. So in 8.1, we looked at f of x equals ax squared. Now, all of those graphs in this function, in this setup, the vertex was located at the origin 0, 0. Today, the vertex will not be located uh, just at 0 comma 0. When you get a number for C other than 0, we have we're going to take into account that in 8.2 f of x equals ax squared plus C, our vertex is now going to be located at 0 comma where the value of C is. Okay? We're going to get into other shifts of vertex uh, in, in 8.3, but for now, uh, that's what it's going to look like today when you have it in this format. So looking at uh, this, you know, the core concepts here, that's kind of what we're saying, is anytime C uh, is a positive number, the vertex is going to be shifted upward. It's, right, it's translating positive um, C units up from that function. If C is negative, your vertex is moving downward. All right, C units, okay? Everything else remains the same. The axis of symmetry will still be X equals zero. Uh, the vertical stretch, vertical shrink comparison uh, is still into play and uh, nothing changes from that. So. Here they just want us to graph g of x equals x squared minus 2, and they want us to compare. All right, so now, now that we have a shift in the vertex, there is uh, two things that they want us to do when, when it comes to comparing. So when we want to compare, we need to determine if it's a vertical uh, stretch, shrink, or neither. Remember when absolute value of A is greater than one for a stretch, absolute value of A is in between zero and one, and for neither, absolute value of A will equal one. All right, that's just a quick review from 8.1. And then, so that's one thing we gotta look at. The second thing is um, the shift in the vertex. Okay, and again, that's going to be denoted by the value of whatever C equals. So in comparison for this one, I would say that this is neither because A is 1, so neither would be in this case. And then you can, you can do the, the second one two different ways. You can just tell me what the vertex is, like vertex will be zero comma negative two, or you can write it out and say vertex moves two units down. Either way, I'll accept both. So graphing it, like again, I'm not super concerned about you spending a ton of time on coordinates and stuff like that, but just trying to find where negative 2 is, negative 1, negative 2, plot the point. A is positive, so it's a right side up U-shaped, and you should be able to identify that and just give me um, a quick graph to let me know that you can uh, easily identify 
uh, those quadratic functions. Okay, here, um, comparing. Uh, so when it comes to comparing, this one is neither because A is 1. And for the second part, I'm going to say my vertex is located at 0, comma, negative 5 because C is negative 5. All right, I'm I'm not gonna go into the graphs. If you if you need if you need uh, to see the graphs, please comment down below. I'm more than happy to um, to do it later. But for right now, uh, comparing this one, number two, this one is also neither because a is one, and my vertex is gonna be located at zero comma positive three, or we could say moves. Uh, vertex three units up. Okay. Here, uh, again, comparing, graphing, uh, just looking at comparing. The first one is it's going to be a stretch because A is four, four is greater than one. Absolute value four is greater than one, and the second part is my vertex is going to be located at zero comma one because c is one, or we could say that the vertex moves up one unit. Here we have a story problem. It says the function f of t is equal to negative sixteen t squared plus s naught. All right, it represents the approximate height in feet of a falling object t seconds after it is dropped from an initial height s not in feet. An egg is dropped from a height of 64 feet. All right, it says how many seconds does does the egg hit uh, how many seconds does the egg hit the ground? So if you look here it says represents Approximate height in feet, falling object in t seconds. So what they're gonna, what they want us to do is, they're gonna look at basically time in feet. They want you to figure out zero is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 64. So since it's dropped at an initial height of 64 feet, the uh, they want you to know at feet, uh, f of t is approximate height and feet of the falling object after t seconds. Well, they want to know how many seconds it is after um, it hits the ground. So if I subtract 64 here, I would say that I have, what, negative 64. So I got negative 64 is equal to negative 16t squared. So negative 64 divided by negative 16 is what, 4? So I got 4 is equal to t squared. Take the square root of both sides to find t. So plus or minus 2 is equal to t. So the only uh, value in this that makes sense is the positive one. So t would equal, so it would take 2 seconds for that egg uh, to hit the ground at a height of 64 feet. So here they're saying, it says, suppose the initial height is adjusted by k feet. How would this affect part A? All right, so they don't give you a, a value in a sense, but think about this. So let's say k was greater than 64 feet. If k was greater than 64 feet, it would take longer than two seconds. It would it would take longer than two seconds to hit the ground. And if k was less than 64 feet, it would it would take uh, less than. two seconds to hit the ground. And that is 
being able uh, to graph f of x equals ax squared plus c. Hope this helps. Until next time.